Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the tetracycline antibiotics. Okay, so uh, next what we're going to do is we, uh, we're just discussing what formal methionine is. So let me draw you the structure of methionine and then I'll show you what formal methionine is. So here's the amino group of uh, a methionine amino acid. Here's the alpha carbon. Here's the... Uh, Oh, well, actually, I'll draw the basic structure of the amino acid, and then I'll draw the R group. So here's the uh, hydrogen off the alpha carbon, and here down here is the carboxyl group. So this is the uh, amino group, this is the acid, this is an amino acid. So the R group for the specific amino acid methionine is you have these two methylene groups, like so, then a sulfur atom, and then a methyl group there. So it's kind of got four main backbone atoms, and one of them is this sulfur here. Okay, so that's the structure of the amino acid methionine, and it is always, absolutely always, the amino acid that you put in as your first amino acid in proteins, and that goes not just for bacteria, but also for eukaryotes as well. Uh, so this is, this is always the first amino acid in any protein, and it's only, it only is put in as the first amino acid, so you don't have it put in in any other place in the protein. It's only used as the first amino acid. Okay, so that's why it's not a very common one to talk about that much. Uh, now, uh, formal, what's formal methionine? Well, basically, um, when you uh, put on this amino acid as the first amino acid, the way you would extend the polypeptide is you'd put another amino acid off this carboxyl terminal. Uh, so you'd then extend it this direction, basically. So you'd use this carboxyl tail, and you'd use the amino group of uh, the next amino acid, and you'd make a peptide link between them, and then you'd continue on this way. Uh, so you'd make the polypeptide going this way. So usually, a uh, polypeptide would have this free amino group right at the start of the polypeptide. And basically, if we're going to use formal methionine, you're going to bind something to that uh, amino group, and it's not going to affect, then, the um, addition of more amino acids to this uh, methionine, basically, because it's the carboxyl terminal that is used to extend the polypeptide, not the amino terminal of the methionine. So, what you add on in bacteria is a formic acid group. So, formic acid is uh, what uh, chemists would now call methanoic acid. So, it's the old name for methanoic acid. So this is methanoic acid slash formic acid. Okay, so uh, what we do if we're going to add a formal group onto things is we uh, basically are going to make an amide link between this amino group and this carboxyl group of the uh, formic acid. So the structure of formal methionine will basically instead of having just a free amine group here, instead that amine group will be bound to this formal group, like so, with an amide link. Okay, and then the rest of the uh, methionine is exactly the same. So here's the alpha carbon, here's the carboxyl group of the um, methionine amino acid down here, and here's the R group coming off the side here. So two methylene groups, uh, then a sulfur atom, and then a methyl group off the end, like so. Right, so that's what I mean by formal methionine. And basically, bacteria don't just put methionine as their first amino acid. Instead, they put formal methionine. So uh, we will uh, henceforth denote formal methionine as just F-met. So when I put F-met, that means formal methionine. So basically, this whole tRNA, uh, which is bound with formal methionine and has this uh, complementary anticodon to this start codon, we'll call this our F-met for formal methionine uh, tRNA, basically. So we bring in our F-met tRNA, and we're going to bind that to this start codon of our mRNA uh, piece that is now bound in this um, 30S mRNA complex at the moment. So this is a 30S mRNA complex so far. Right, okay, so we're going to bring in this uh, tRNA, so let me draw the next step. Um, right, how should I draw an arrow? So we'll draw it coming down here, and the next step is going to be drawn down here. 
And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to bind our formalmethionine tRNA, our FMET tRNA, to that start codon of our mRNA. So, when you do this, what happens is the elongate, uh, sorry, the initiation factor free drops off. So, basically, this uh, initiation factor here, I, initiation factor free, is going to drop off when we add the formalmethionine tRNA. So, basically, it's done its job. It was necessary in order to add the mRNA. Uh, and the uh, formalmethionine tRNA, but now it's no longer necessary and it can leave basically. So these are still here. And the uh, initiation factor 1, 2, and the GTP are still necessary. They are necessary in order for this uh, formalmethionine tRNA to bind as well. So here's our mRNA strand here. Then we've got our Shine Dalgano sequence still there, so I'll cover that one in here. And then we've got our start codon, our AUG, in the mRNA here. So this is our start codon, and I'll give that a colour as well. It can be red. So that's red now. So that's our start codon there. So this is this thing, and also right back in this initial picture, here's the start codon here. So, now what we have done is we've brought this formalmethionine tRNA, and we've bound it in there, and I will just show the formalmethionine tRNA like so. Okay, so so far that's where we've got to. And this whole structure with um, the 30S ribosomal subunit still bound to the initiation factors 1 and 2 and this GTP molecule with the mRNA bound to it and this uh, first uh, tRNA with its formalmethionine, that is known as the initiation complex or the 30S initiation complex. So this is the 30S initiation complex. Okay, so the next step is that the next uh, portion of the ribosome, the bacterial ribosome, doesn't just consist of a 30S subunit, it also consists of a 50S subunit, which is a slightly bigger subunit. So the next step in the translation process is that this other subunit, this 50S subunit, needs to come and bind uh, to make the full 70S initiation complex. Okay, so... Uh, here's the 30S, still here. So I'm drawing over it, just at the moment I'm just copying this picture, and then we'll add in what's come in in a moment, which is the 50S subunit is going to come in and bind. Oops, uh, whoopsie, um, yes, um, we'll have to redraw this, because uh, when the 50S subunit actually comes in, what happens is the elongate, in, sorry, initiation factor 1 and initiation factor 2 break off, and also the GTP hydrolyzes to GDP and inorganic phosphate. So we don't need those anymore in there. So draw that and put a great big cross for it, in the words of Dr. Najib. Uh, so here's the 30S subunit here, and um, it's no longer got this initiation factor 1 or this initiation factor 2, and it's no longer got this GTP bound to it, because they go, they are there in order to actually uh, produce this um, bond between the 30S and the 50S, but now that the 50S is there, they've done their job, basically, and they're off. Okay, so here is our mRNA here, which is gradually getting shorter and shorter in our pictures. Uh, here's the Shine Dalgano sequence, still here, and here's the uh, start codon. And here, basically, is our new friend, the 50S subunit, here. Okay, right, so this is the... Uh, let me move this up right into the centre. So this is the 50S ribosomal subunit. So 50S ribosomal subunit. This is the 30S ribosomal subunit. This is our uh, start codon. And I think in the pictures from now on, I will stop drawing the shine... Actually, I'll continue drawing it. It doesn't take too much effort. Uh, but there's the shine Dalgano sequence, which, remember, was important for this initial bond forming between the 30S uh, subunit and uh, the mRNA. And here is our first uh, formalmethionine tRNA, which is bound to that start codon. Okay, so now you have formed what is known as the 70S initiation complex. And basically, we are ready to go. Uh, we're ready to begin the process of translation now. We've got our full initiation complex assembled. Now, there are two main sites that you can, um, that are present on the ribosome. And I'm going to sort of draw them here in dotted lines. 
there are two main sites for, um, for amino acids to sit. One is the P site, which is what this site that the um, formal methionine tRNA is currently in. And then the other site is known as this A site, so we'll call this here this A site. And this basically is where the next um, tRNA is going to come and bind to, basically. So this is the A site here. And there's also sometimes a, f um, a third site, which we might draw maybe over here, which is the exit site. So that's where tRNAs are going to exit. Okay, so that's the E site for exit. Some people uh, often refer to this as APE. A for where the tRNAs are going to come in with their amino acids. Uh, here is the P site, because that's where the important bit of this enzyme is, uh, which is the peptidyl transferase enzyme, which is the enzyme which is actually going to link the amino acids uh, of adjacent tRNAs together to make the um, peptide links, basically. So peptidyl transferase is somewhere down here, basically, on our drawing. So I might as well label it up and tell you about that now, because that's going to become very important. Peptidyl transferase is down here. Okay, um, and uh, then finally, there's the site where uh, the empty tRNAs, which have lost their amino uh, acids because the amino acids are coming into the protein, where those tRNAs exit, and that's this E site over here, basically. Right, okay, so there's our 70S initiation complex. What we're now going to do is actually initiate translation, but we'll continue that discussion in the next video.